Hello everybody, this is Ben Nikolic coming back to play some more Jeskai Control, but this deck is uh, updated now with the new cards from War of the Spark. And with how modern it is right now, I, th I thought Jeskai was pretty bad, mostly because it couldn't really deal with a lot of what was going on in the grave with the graveyard decks, Dredge, uh, Phoenix, just none of those really great matchups. Uh, but with, you know, the recent Pro Tour, Humans is a lot more popular after winning the Mythic Championship. And there's some cool new, new tools we can use, I think. So instead of playing traditionally Search for Iskanta as kind of our way to get card advantage, which really means you can't play a card like Relic of Progenitus, instead we're playing Narset Parter of Veils, which I have been very impressed with so far. Another way to help combat these graveyard decks is Ashiok Dream Render, which also kind of does some good work against decks like Amulet and Tron because they can't search their deck. And so this really lets us play these three main deck Relic Progenitus, which is something I think Jeskai was missing from, you know, the other decks that were kind of succeeding at kind of a controlling or mid-range strategy had the ability to play main deck Graveyard Hate, uh, something like Nile Spellbomb. That's kind of why Esper really kind of took over, and I th thought it was a better choice for a while. But with the addition of being able to play some cards like Ashiok and Relic in the main deck, I think Jeskai can really compete and do really well. There's also been a pretty big uptick in some of these mono red prison decks, uh, and I think I'd, against them, where they're kind of a blood moon kind of lock deck, a card like Narset is a little bit better than something like Search for Ascanta. Uh, also, just kind of a little bit harder to deal with. So that's it for our main deck, pretty much. We're playing uh, one Jace. We have only three snaps because we have these relics. This can sometimes be a little awkward, but. You know, if you kind of plan around it when you have a Snapcaster, just try to flashback something cheap before cracking the Relic, it's normally fine. And then we only have one Logic Knot, we're playing a Mana Leak and a Gate instead of two more Logic Knots. Once again, it's a concession to play Relic. And then in our sideboard, we have two Celestial Purge, I think that's pretty good right now. Another Ashiok, another Surgical, some more Graveyard Hate, or can, you know, like I said, decks that search their library a lot. Braid, I think is pretty good, just some decks where you want it, you can kind of it's really good against the, uh, especially those mono red, like Karn decks where they have a lot of weird artifacts and they have like Goblin Rabble Master and Legion War Boss, uh, Damping Sphere, Stony Silence, some more stuff to help against Tron, uh, Terry Time Lab Raveler, absolutely great. Anytime your opponent is trying to also play at instant speed, if you can get this down, the game is pretty pretty much over because it's so hard for them to deal with. Uh, Dovin's Veto, the new Negate that can't be countered. D Sphere, just kind of a catch-all. Some clicks for some pressure, and then a few counter spells to round out the sideboard. Yeah, so let's run this real league today and see how it goes. All right, back for round one. We're on the draw here. Very good hand. So gonna keep it. You know, counter spell removal, cantrip, has it all. All right, so let's see what we're up against here. Spire Bluff Canal. Probably the Phoenix deck, if I had to guess. There's a path that can be pretty good against them. And this deck is one of the decks that I think Jessica had an okay matchup with before, but with how popular it was, and it wasn't really, you know, you're never super excited to play against it. I think this new version should be a bit better. And this deck is, I think, probably one of the best decks in Modern. I actually played it over, assuming that's what they are playing, uh, played it at the Modern Classic in SCG Richmond and had a lot of fun with it. deck felt really good. I'm going to shock here and cycle this illumination. We really want to make sure we can find another land. Oh, Ashiok can be really good against them if they spend some time just setting up and then we get the ability to get rid of their graveyard. But let's see. They're not doing a whole lot. Slight of hand. Just let that resolve. And the serum moon. Okay. Alright, they went one top, one bottom. Uh, I'm not going to do anything here. So, do I want to just play Ashiok? I think so. I'm probably just going to play it minus, get rid of that top card. Although, I kind of would rather wait until they, maybe they have a Phoenix in the graveyard. This could also still be Storm, I suppose. But. Hmm. I could also just pass with having Logic not up, and then Field Ruin if they don't do anything. Think, what would I rather do? 
think I'd rather just get Ashiok down, maybe. Hmm. This is a tough spot. Don't have our fourth land, which is kind of annoying. Which means we could kind of want to feel the rune them anyway. Let's just play the Ashtag. They scrape to the top. Oh, they haven't really done anything. If logic not should be pretty good. I'm gonna wait I'm gonna wait at least one turn. Because we can at least feel the ruin them, there's no problem. And unfortunately Ashiok is worded in such a way that if we feel the ruin them um, with Ashiok in play, they still get to search a land because it's our ability, I believe. Alright, so it does, it does actually look like this is probably Storm, since they have put a Shivan Reef. So if I go for the Field of Ruin, they might gift. That could have been a good reason to play Ashiok. We weren't exactly sure what they were doing, they just played some cantrips. Shivan Reef, though, kind of makes me think that they're more likely to be a storm. We'll do this. They're going to be able to resolve their gifts and given no matter what, so. And actually, yeah, so the gifts here, we, if we put a couple um, cards in their graveyard, like we put, say, the Past and Flames in the graveyard and something else, and then if we can exile their graveyard, that could be pretty good. Yeah, if we draw a fourth land, I think I will probably just play Ashiok with a removal spell up. Should be pretty hard for them to go off through that. Although they will be getting some cards off this gift. Maybe if they don't have the creatures, they're going to try to get some sort of creature pile. Alright, so they get a pretty standard... Alright, they don't get a pass in flames, they get a bunch of rituals and remand. Really, not, not definitely not going to let them have the remand. So let's put the remand in their graveyard. And I think we'll just try to fight over cards, so we'll let them have the mana. It's going to be kind of hard to fight over that, so let's just put the mana morphos into the graveyard. Yeah, let's do that. So we know that they have two rituals. So drawing a, a land here would be pretty pretty big. There's a Narset. Ooh, maybe I'll just play this. I don't. This seems like it'd be pretty hard for them to get through as well. I can't. So if you don't know what this does, it's, they won't be able to draw any additional cards. I might play Narset and not even activate it, uh, just so it's harder for them to kill with like a lightning bolt or a small grape shot. Um. They can't draw any cards. The big issue would be, say, they, they already have a grip shot. We play this in our set, and they go, they simply just go creature, ritual, 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 kill in our set, and go off from there. The Ashok would exile their graveyard, because it feels like they probably have a past in flames. Uh, I think I'm just going to go with the Narset, though. Yeah, pretty unfortunate. If we had another land, I think we would be in a really great shape, because we could have a removal spell up. But I don't really want to pass again. Alright. Yeah, I'm not going to activate. We'd have to discard. It, uh, it's kind of like a search for his Kanta activation. Can get any non creature, non land in the top four. Yeah, so we definitely can lose here. But I think we had to do something. Like sitting here discarding the hand size forever is probably not the best. I think they even spliced there. Yeah, if they already have a grape shot, they even empty the Warrens. There's a Manamorphos, so they can make some blue, but they can't draw anything. They have a Past in Flames, which I think they can gift some given. But, let's see what they can do here. Maybe they can find some sort of unsummon. Maybe maybe Nar maybe Ashiok would have been better then. They wouldn't be able to gift. Mm, we got pretty punished for that turn. We did really didn't do anything. If, maybe if we play Ashiok there, then they probably could have comboed off anyway. Let's see. It's going to depend on what they uh, have access to for game one. I 
I guess there could have been an argument to minus the narcissist if they're going to be able to kill it. They can probably kill it a bunch of different ways. All right, so they have a bunch of mana. I'm definitely going to put this. I think if we put the grape shot and the echoing truth in the graveyard, so they have what six mana. They need to either cast this, pass in flames, or flashback the other one. I think they can get us here though. So I'm, yeah, I'm just going to put. Echoing Truth and Grape Shot into the graveyard. Let's see if they can figure it out. So they flash that back. They're going to flash back all their rituals. Yeah, now they just Grape Shot or Echoing Truth this, and we're pretty dead. Right? It's already 12th Storm, they can definitely do it. Alright, I'm just going to concede. If we had another land there, I think we would have been in really good shape. Maybe maybe we messed up with not playing Ashiok on turn 3, maybe we just slammed it. But, I think this matchup should be pretty good. So let's bring in all this sort of stuff. A lot of cards to bring in here. I definitely want at least all these. I might even bring in, sometimes bring in Celestial Purge in case they are like Blood Moon deck, which they're more likely to be when they play like Shivan Reef and stuff like that. Um, so we want all these. Normally I like to go down a little bit on some of these more expensive cards. Cut a couple of paths, a couple of Lightning Helixes. Electrolyze also not great. I think I'll leave in just one Supreme Verdict. We also have a Detention Sphere, so having two answers to empty I think is fine. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should leave in a Verdict over... <coughs> Sorry about that. Maybe we should leave in a Verdict over a Path. It is a little bit expensive, but let's just see how this looks if we do this. Sometimes they go a little bit lower on the creatures. Two bolts and two helixes could be enough. Plus a path as well. Maybe we should cut a Snapcaster Mage since we're going. So we have all these relics. But we still do have enough kind of cheap stuff. It could probably be good. Maybe we want to go down a three drop. We have a lot of three drops. Definitely not going to cut these though. Alright, maybe we will cut a verdict. And leave in a helix. Hmm. Yeah, I think this is fine. Kind of trim down a little bit all of our cheap interaction. Still got our good planeswalkers. Let's see. It's actually just leaving a path over helix. Sometimes having your removal cost one can be pretty important. Where it's a lot better against Remand or if they have soft permission. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Alright, definitely play first. Um, yeah, I think I'll keep this. A little bit light on action, but we have an opt. And click is one of the best cards. And D Sphere can help prevent a quick uh you know, a really quick empty the warrants. Alright, just gonna play Flood Strain and Pass. Probably just gonna fetch shock for Steam Vents here. We have a basic island. If they have a Blood Moon, they might they might just get us, but we'll have to see. All right. So let's get the Steam Vents. We're just looking for pretty much a cheap counter spell, or maybe one of the three mana planeswalkers could be good too. Negate is perfect. There's a Tarn. Yeah, I'm just going to play Tarn and pass. What did they do with their last turn vision? They put two to the bottom. It would probably be way too aggressive to negate this. But, 
I don't know, going two to the bottom, if you're ever going to negate a steering vision, that's probably when you want to do it. We'll put two to the bottom again. But if we don't know that, that means that they're looking for lands, really. All right. Just going to fetch here. I'm going to get another hollowed fountain. So I'm going to play Field of Ruin and pass with negate and click up. And once we have the click down, it's pretty nice that we can kind of sit behind it. It really puts a lot of pressure on them what you need to do so they don't just get a ton of time to sit back and get a really stocked hand ready for one turn. Alright, let's see what they got. Alright, they kill our click, which is kind of annoying, but got a card of their hand, at least we get to see what's going on. So they have just two mana morphos, desperate ritual, gifts and given a grape shot. So not a ton going on here. I might just take the gifts and given because they're really going to need some sort of way to get some more cards or something, so I think we're just going to take gifts, leave them with I mean, they, it still seems like the Manamorphos cycle, obviously, but I don't really think there's a point in taking them rituals or whatever, yeah, I'm just going to take the gifts and we do need to draw a little more action here Colonnade is kind of action but it's going to be a long time before we can just try to activate that Play a Spire Bluff, so we know they drew that. I am going to field her, and then I'm going to get planes. Just in case they have Blood Moon. You never know. Even though I don't, I don't think they probably do. But. Right, there's a Snapcaster Mage. And that's not the worst in that it could let us snap opt or something on their end step just to kind of get some uh, velocity going. Because I'm planning on snap opting, I think I'll play the Glacial Fortress. So that we can also have negate up in case they found some sort of instant like another gifts and gimmon. Right, yeah, they're just playing their lands. All right, let's opt. Another snapcaster mage. I think I'm gonna bottom that actually, even though we do have a negate. I really want you know, either a three mana walker or just another kind of maybe something cheaper. Even I wouldn't even mind like a relic. Although it is pressure. I, I think I'm just going to bin it though. Alright, another field of ruin, not great. Yeah, we just don't really have anything proactive to kind of flash back. I'm kind of looking for something a bit more proactive to do while their hand is kind of clunky. Something like a Narset would be great because, you know, they have these two cycling cards. Even to fair I'm, I'm gonna play. So first let's attack. Let's go up. There's a Narset. Can't play it this turn unfortunately. I think I'll just play Field of Ruin. Uh, untapping two lands with the intention to Field of Ruin them. But next turn, yeah, if we can make it out of another turn, having to ferry down and Narset down, that'd be r really good. All right, they're going for a Manamorphos. Not too surprising. They're just going to need to kind of cycle some stuff. Uh, there's a sleight of hand, that's fine. Yeah, so maybe they'll just go play a bunch of Cantor stuff and Grape Shot away or Teferi, which is totally fine with me. Uh, we won't really be able to negate to kind of get away from that, but. Narset, at least, then when it comes down, could be a little bit, you know, stronger. They're maybe kind of go off a little bit. Let's see what they have. I'd counter something like a Pieces of the Puzzle or, or a Gift Some Given or Past in Flames. And maybe if they found an empty, that could be pretty good for us since we have this Detention Sphere. 
I'm getting a pretty big storm count here. There's a piece of the puzzle. I think I will counter this. Um, they only have three cards. I use this Manamorphose. They still have one of them to Grape Shot. I think it would be hard for them to kill us unless it's something we already couldn't beat, like double Grape Shot. So I'm just going to counter this. To imagine they're probably just gonna grape shock our Teferi, call our snap, deal some damage to us. Yep, looks like, looks like what's going on. Now Narset should be very good here. They play a Shiv and Rake this turn. Yeah, they played Shiv and I think I don't think we know anything anymore. Alright, so blue blue. Oh, I think I was supposed to field her in them. But, oh no, we negated. That's why I couldn't do that. Blue, blue. I'll tap the fielder in, so we might need to have Helix up. Our set. I will minus here. Ooh, Relic's pretty good. So let's have the ability to crack Relic up. Eh, I won't bother. Technically, it's correct to, you know, use it on them whenever possible, but they have so many cards that that won't make a difference. And I'm probably just going to crack it eye, and they just can see. This seems pretty tough for them to beat. Alright, nice. So we didn't see a whole ton. They didn't play any creatures, which makes me think maybe we want another Cryptic, because they've probably moved away from that a little bit, more toward the pieces of the puzzle plan. So that makes me kind of want Helix over Path, just because that does something when they're not playing the creatures. On the draw, though, maybe just having one cryptic is fine, or having the same number of cryptics is fine. We didn't see any empty the warrens, but I'm pretty sure they have it. I think two answers is still probably fine. On the draw, it could be said that we want three answers, but I think this is the configuration I want to go with. This will be the harder one winning it on the draw here. Hmm. Hey Mulligan, I am going to keep this. It's a little bit slow. It doesn't have a pe cheap piece of counter magic, but it's got this Teferi, which I really like. It makes it really, really easy to fight on their turn. Uh, it's got the D-Sphere if they go for a quick empty. You know, enough lands and a cantrip. So I think this is definitely a keep. This Teferi, kind of wish was something else. But does at least let us build towards something in the late game. There's a mountain. I'm trying to think if I want to lead on maybe shocking and steam vents here, or if I should just lead on colonnade. I think we're going to lead on colonnade. Uh, hope that we don't need to have a really impactful play on turn two. They did mulligan in their deck, you know, for the first couple turns. It's kind of slow, kind of doesn't do a ton. I think we can afford just to play the colony. All right, yeah, and they're just passing. They're surgical. That can be pretty good. Um, normally in this matchup, I try to surgical grape shot, which just then makes it so that they need to go for the empty plan, which is much easier to deal with. All right, they just pass. All right, and it looks like they might just be passing again. So it's really nice when they're when they're just missing land drops. Uh, I will cycle this illumination. I think we're going to have plenty to do with our mana later. Or Snapcaster even. Um, yeah, I guess I'll fetch just another hollowed fountain. Do I want to play the Teferi? So they haven't really had any plays, so they could pretty easily have a remand. But if we don't do anything, we have nothing really to do on their turn, other than maybe just play a Snapcaster. So I think this, because it's pretty unlikely that they're able to kill us, I think I will just try to play this to Fairy. I think I'll play the Mountain. 
Would not be surprised if they had a remand or something, though. Spell Pierce. That's fine, too. Spell Pierce is always going to be good against us. And I kind of would honestly rather have them use it on something random than for them to have it in the on the turn they kind of try to go off in the mid-game. Yeah, we still have the Sturgical up, which maybe can do something. So just playing out a Brawl. All right, Bolt is really, really good here. Let's, let's just Bolt that. And I think because we drew the Bolt, I'm going to shock in the Steam Vents. Since their hand is a bit clogged up, they could easily have another creature. They have to have all spells, obviously. Don't think I want to Surgical anything. Um, the one benefit to Surgical in something would maybe let us know if the coast is clear for Teferi. Which I guess isn't terrible. We could maybe we could surgical brawl. We have the snap to surgical again. Kind of let us know what's going on in their hand. But I have a hard time believing they wouldn't have another counter spell. So I think we can just untap and draw. I think we can kind of wait until they uh, they tap their mana to get this to fairy since they're so low on mana. This is really nice getting this big mana advantage here. Yeah, I'm just gonna take another turn. Um, when the game goes like this, I think it's better for us. Click is good too. This will let us either click them or we can snap illumination if that's something we think we need to do. To do. Click out good with surgical as well. Can maybe let us try to get something out of their hand from their graveyard. So yeah, I think I'll go for the click here. I, I, it's probably unlikely we'll end up taking anything because the thing they need most is just more lands. Looks like maybe they're thinking about maybe they have ritual gifts ungiven here, which would be fine with me. Um, but yeah, so when their hand is like this, it's the click. You always don't really need to take anything. So a lot of times it's better just to kind of see what they have. Yeah, so they definitely do have a remand. All right, and they do have. All right, all right so they have a Baral, so maybe we'll surgical Baral to get that one out of their hand. So a braid, desperate ritual, gifts, remand, pass to flame to the creatures, and Baral. So they have an abrade that can kill our click. I'm not going to take that. I'm not really worried about that at all. They have one ritual. Not worried about the brawl. Like I said, we're going to surgical it. So I think we can probably take the gifts ungiven. It makes it. A lot harder for them to do anything this turn. Like they could say they just ritual gift four lands. That would honestly be a pretty good play. Um, Path and flames. Since we have the surgical, I'm not as worried about it. We have a lot of graveyard hate we can draw too. The graveyard's not really stocked or anything. I think they're kind of far away from doing that. So let's just take the gift. And I suppose we surgical the brawl right now. I think we're going to end up doing it anyway. And if they drew something else, maybe uh, we went, well, we could snap surgical now or something like that. So here's their hand. I think we should. I'm not exactly sure how surgical will reveal their hand, but right now that's what they got. Yeah, so if we can find a Dispel, something like that, that could be really good. Also, we get to look at their deck, which is pretty nice. Okay, so what did they draw? Looks like they drew... Very Desperate Ritual. They drew a Ritual, okay. So definitely get the one in their hand. The one in their graveyard. So they have two Electromancers. Okay. One more Past in Flames. They just have one Empty the Warrens, two Grape Shots. They have one more spell pierce in their deck, two pieces of the puzzle. Okay, I think we should be able to do, beat this. 
And yeah, so they have this plus another ritual. And they have a repeal. Oh, yeah, and it didn't show us their updated hand. But they don't have a brawl. And I guess we might as well field ruin them. Fix our mana. Make theirs a little bit worse. Maybe they have to tap the shivery for one or two points of damage. The cow, they're gonna braid. Yeah, that's fine. This does mean they still have remand up if we, you know, want to play Teferi, but yeah, I think I'll just get so we're trying to play around Blood Moon. Yeah, just we're gonna need an island and planes, so. There's a hollowed fountain. Let's play this tap. Yeah, I'm just going to pass with the ability to Snapcaster Illumination to the end of their turn. I don't really have a ton going. This is another spot where one of those three mana Planeswalkers would just be really, really good. All right. I am going to go for Snapcaster Illumination. It doesn't mean we don't have access to the Surgical right now. Uh, and, they, and it is not even a terrible target for them to remand. But if they remand it, then we can play Teferi. And if they don't, then hopefully we find some counter spells. Maybe a relic. Oh, yeah, looks like they're going to go for a remand here. It's a good target for them. I kind of wanted them to do it, but it makes a lot of sense from their, from their perspective as well. Uh. Just because they need to find cards, it's going to be hard for them to convert that if they don't have enough mana. So, let's go to Fairy. Plus, alright, Logic Knot is excellent. Let's get them. Get a little bit of lag here, might need to restart the client. After this game, definitely gonna need to restart the climb, I think. Alright, let's untap some lands and pass. Alright, now we're in great shape. They can, they can Echoing Truth or Teferi or something, but probably just let it resolve if they try to do that and just recast it. Echoing Truth is an interesting one for them to bring in. It's got enough applications. We have some kind of random stuff anyway that it's probably not the worst against. Alright, there's an Electromancer, which we have the Helix for, so I'll let it resolve. And then in response to this, just kill it. They go for a Manamorphos. So, this is the Desperate Ritual we know about. They have two cards in hand, and they are these two cards. So, what happens if we counter this Manamorphos? Let's think. So, we counter this, this would die. Um, they would get up to four mana, and there's nothing they could really do. We let this resolve. They get a little bit more mana. Still don't think there's a ton they can do, though. If we. Can if we let it resolve. And using a logic on a Manamorphos is not the best. I think I will just let it resolve. This is really only terrible if somehow they go Manamorphos and a bunch more Manamorphoses, but as long as we can counter this Past and Flames, I think we're, we're, we're looking pretty good. They could also try to Echoing Truth their own Electromancer, I suppose. Alright, so they're going for Echoing Truth on their Electromancer. Uh, I'll let it resolve. Um, if, they're, if they want to try to recast it, I'd rather counter it when they go to recast it. Just kind of make them use more of their mana. And actually, let's think. So they're going to have to tap their only blue. 
They want to recast it this turn. Maybe maybe they'll hold it. So we know they have a Past in Flames and an Electromancer. Alright, so they're going to play Electromancer with three mana. I think we just let it resolve. Because the Past in Flames doesn't really do anything. Yeah. So they're just going to pass now. I'd rather use the Detention Sphere to kind of answer this. Um, all right, let's start with Teferi Plus. Oh, Narset's great. Um, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Basically eight, nine. So yeah, we can we can afford to opt before doing anything else. I don't really want that. Cryptic is not bad. All right, so let's uh, play Detention Sphere on the Electromancer. Let's play Narset. I think I will even minus. I didn't bring in Lightning Bolt. Um, so we already have a Cryptic, which is kind of expensive. And a ton of card advantage. I think I'll take the Relic, since we know they have a Pass in Flames. Can't play it this turn, but still pretty good. Uh, untap two lands. Yeah, now we have a lot of not up. They only have two cards, one for the Pass and Flames. Can't draw any cards. Pieces of the puzzle, yeah, I'll just counter that. Alright, and they just concede. Nice. Alright. Lost game one, but post board we had a lot of cool lock pieces and stuff. Alright, I'm gonna restart the client real quick and then I'll be back for round two. Alright, back for round two on the die roll. Take the play. Uh yeah, this hand looks pretty good. I'm gonna keep it. So I think this was hand with this hand I'm going to Yeah, I'll just play Colony first. I was thinking if I wanted to play Scalling Tarn, I could fetch Shock for Steam Vents and play the Relic. Um, but honestly, against the decks where Relic, Relic is great, sometimes you don't even want them to know you have it on turn one. Oh, looks like we're playing against Death Shadow. Maybe it would have been good to play it there. But if they're taking our Relic, they're not taking our Path or our Snap. So, assuming this is Grixis Death Shadow. Yes, yeah, so the idea would have been to play. We could fetch Shock, Steam Vents, play this, and then. Just play Colonnade on two since we have a bolt. We'd still be able to deal with anything early. Right, they just take snap, which makes a lot of sense in any sort of uh, game that you think is going to go long. Just brace it. when your thoughts using taking Snapcaster is often correct. Right, let's just play a Tarn. Don't know about the Flooded Strand, so. Right, let's relic them and pass. If this is Grixis Death Shadow, Relic really uh, can tax them a lot, make it hard for them to have a good Gurmag Angler, you know, make their Snapcaster Mage just Colligan's Command is pretty bad. I guess it gives them a target for Colligan's Command, kind of, but. I don't think we're going to crack it yet. I will probably crack it if it would prevent them from playing a Gurmag Angler. Uh, because they took our Snapcaster, it's kind of fine to leave it in play as well. If we had left the snap in hand, I probably would have. It would be kind of made it kind of awkward. So, Supreme Verdict, great card. Especially when they don't know about it. Maybe they're trying to set up some sort of, you know, double death shadow turn or something like that. The nice thing is they can't. They also can't get too low. They know we have a couple of lightning bolts, so they can't take too much damage. Right, they thought scour themselves. Yeah, so this could be a spot to crack the relic. I know it doesn't look like it's great value or anything, but I don't really want them to play Gurmag. We do kind of need another card. Um, well, if they play Gurmag, we just path it. But I, I think I will use the relic right now. It's a Teferi. They're going to thought see this. That's fine. I assume they're going to take path or verdict. And 
take the verdict. All right, their mana looks to be a little bit awkward. Here I'm gonna fetch. Um, I could get Sacred Foundry, since we do have some mana intensive cards here. We don't really need a second Moya. It would only be awkward if we drew another non-blue land and a cryptic, so I think, I think it's fine just to get the Sacred Foundry. So another Helix. Alright, so now they're... Yeah, and this is why I did want to have a second red source. You know, in case we need to go for just a flurry of lightning bolts to kill them. So they're normally going to go to 9 if they want to play a Shadow to get it out of uh, range. And if they ever want red mana, they're probably going to have to take damage. There's a Snapcaster Mage. Okay. So they're going to Snapcaster Thought Sees Us, which puts them to 8. So we're just going to let it resolve, and they have to take one of the Lightning Bolts or the Helix. Otherwise, they are just dead. Yep, so they just do that. Um, so do I want to helix them right now? I think we can just wait. If they play more discard. It's, I really don't want to just be kind of using these for no for no reason. And because they don't have any four power creature in play, we don't have to really worry about stubborn denial right now or anything like that. All right. We're just going to take two. We're probably going to have to take a couple hits from the Snapcaster if we want to kind of keep the threat of them getting bolted out. Alright, they just pass. And in games like this, just the longer the game goes, I think that's pretty good for us. I'm just going to play this Oft. Um, Field Ruin. We do need a fifth land, but I think I'd rather have a spell right now. We'll find the land. There's a Jace. Okay. Jace is good too. So now that we have these cards, I'm kind of more inclined to want to use our, you know, Helix and our other removal to deal with the Snapcaster since we just really want it to be a long game. I will take the hit here just to kind of threaten having mana. We kept on top, so our opponent probably thinks we drew something pretty good. Could easily be a card like a Logic Knot that I think we have. All right, they go for Shadow. I'm just going to let it resolve. I go for another shadow. That's fine as well. I guess. So let's. Alright, this makes me think that they probably have a stubborn denial playing these, but how can we beat that anyway? So let's think. If we try to helix them right now, they probably would not stubborn denial it. So instead, I think we're going to helix the Snapcaster. Yeah, let's Helix, Snapcaster, Mage. I'm going to try a path one here. Expecting them to counter it, and then if we draw a land... Alright, so actually they don't have the Stubborn Denial. Okay, that's pretty nice. Maybe they really want the land, maybe they do have a Stubborn Denial, who knows. But... There's a Relic. I think I'm just going to play Jason Unsummon this. The counter spell here, that would be pretty good discipline from them. Nah, they do have the server now. Makes sense. Uh, still think the play was fine. Hopefully, they won't be able to have either another stubborn denial or a snapcaster mage. If we, if we just draw a land, we can try to, to ferry. That looks, looks like it could be a Gurmag. Right, the Gurmag leaving up some mana. Draw a path, which is not bad. Alright, so let's play this Relic. And in their upkeep, I suppose I'll try to path them. Alright, so let's path the Shadow. Tyrant's Scorn, interesting. They're going to bounce it to their hand. Okay. 
good crack relic, huh? That's an interesting card. That's pretty cool. I guess three converted mana cost kills basically everything. Alright, so we're gonna take five. Getting pretty low here. Alright, we go for the shadow. And I'm gonna crack this relic. A little annoying that now our Snapcaster Mages, you know, won't be able to flashback path. Alright, we have a Tarn. Alright, so I think we're gonna go for Teferi. And minus on the shadow. Let's see if can we plus? No, plusing we just die. Alright, so minus in the shadow. Uh, they will just have to attack our Teferi. Which, so it also gained us a bit of life, which is nice. Could die to a team or battle rage, which I believe we saw one already, but we don't have red yet, so. Alright, we have another shadow. I think a verdict would be really good here. Second helix. Alright, so our first option would be to just animate Celestial Colonnade. Try to block. Um, I don't think that'll work. They have four cards. It would make a lot of sense for them to have some sort of removal spell. Another option would be to double Helix the Shadow or the Gurmag to kill them. The other option, I think I'm just going to pass for right now and kind of see what they do. The other option would be to try to just double helix them. I guess that grows the shadow is the problem. But we're gonna wait until they at least attack us. Yeah, right, we double if we double helix them we just die, so. Uh, this is so if we target the shadow, it's much worse against something like if they just they're holding a street wraith. They could easily be holding a street wraith because they can't cycle it. So maybe we have to target Gurmag Angler. Yeah, I think so. so let's just helix that twice. Alright, so they're dismembering their Gurmag so that we don't gain the life. It looks like we're going to go to one. No, and they also had the street right. Yeah. All right. Good play by them. Yeah, I think we... Hmm, maybe we messed up somewhere that game. Felt like we should have been able to win it. That's all right, though. I think this is a pretty good matchup. All right. Post board. I want Teferi. I want D-Sphere. Some purges. A Dispel. Probably Dovin's Veto, too. I think Dovin's Veto, I don't think it's great, but I think it's better than Negate. Um, I'd like to trim on some more expensive stuff like Cryptic. Definitely take out most of these Lightning Bolts. We want to bring in Ashiok. Exiling the Graveyard is just kind of okay. Like, I think Relic and the one Ashiok we already have are kind of better at that already. Maybe we bring in one Vendillion Click. Yeah, this seems good. All right. Would like to play first. Uh, definitely a mulligan. All right, let's keep. Oh, it's looking for one more land. Kind of awkward that Ashiok is just okay, but especially a matchup like this, so you really don't want to have any dead cards, and this can kind of be a dead card in some games. Um, and if they have a thought seize, they can see it coming. Use it or fetch lands first. Yeah, honestly, maybe I should have taken the draw. Sometimes taking the draw in this matchup can be pretty good, just because like mulliganing on the play, especially, this end will feel really bad if we get thought seized or anything like that. So maybe we should have taken the draw. I think with the Narsets though, you and the uh, the three minute fairy, you probably want to be on the play just because it's easier 
to get it down without it being under any pressure, like a 3-mana Planeswalker. So, with the older versions, I would take the draw a lot, just because having one extra card was such a big deal. And even though they're kind of like an aggressive deck, they often don't play their first threat until turn three. Alright. The Dovin's Veto, we're going to bottom that. We can't even cast it. Let's call on turn and say go. Yeah, we're getting Dot Seized. Not great. Have to imagine they're going to take probably Celestial Purge. I know I said last time, take Snapcaster, so that could be fine too. But we're so low on mana, yeah, they just take Celestial Purge. Right. Get a tapped all of them. Now, maybe in that last game we could try to get more aggressive with our Lightning Bolts or something. Right, draw Relic. Perfect combo of Snapcaster Mage. Uh, I'm probably going to end up cycling it at the end of their turn. Just because I want to hit land drops. We already have Ashiok if we need to hit out their graveyard. Uh, they go for Inquisition. That's fine. Uh, neither of these cards are really great right now. Uh, they take the Ashiok, which I think I prefer. Just because that wasn't going to do a whole lot for us. Alright, oh, actually, I. So they don't have another land that makes a lot of sense to take Ashiok, um, just because if it would prevent all their fetch lands from being lands if we were able to play it. Like I will still cycle this. Uh, just want to hit land drops. So it's a fairy. Okay. Yeah, and you can see how, like I said, mulliganing is just so, um, so bad for us. Because you know just. Any hand that's keepable is going to be more often better than against a bunch of discard spells. Also, being on the draw, it seems like they probably would have had to mulligan this hand. This seems like a hand where you can definitely keep it on the draw, but on the play, you would just have to throw it back. All right, they take Verdict. All right, so for false. I mean, we probably will win this game if we just draw another land and play a Teferi before they do anything. Inquisition, all right, well, I guess we'll just play Snapcast, maybe. Kind of interesting they would play. They knew we had the cards in our hand. All right, so drawing a land here would be really nice. Illumination. All right, that's not bad either. I'm just gonna cast that for the full cost. Uh, and I'm not gonna attack them. Um, we wanted to make this game go longer. There's no real reason to attack them. It would let them play a Death Shadow. Which you know. When you have seven cards in hand and one land, it could be something they want to do is play a Death Shadow. Yeah, so I'm just going to play Teferi. Plus, yeah, I'm still not going to attack them. Probably start attacking them soon, but there's no reason to let them do anything. Yeah, and so it looks like our opponent kept a little bit of a sketchy hand. I think it's probably fine if I had three discard spells, a land, maybe some other good stuff while on the draw. Um, all right, yeah, and they just get. All right, so we won that game. So now for the hard one, it's game three. Although, if we get to be on the draw, I actually don't really mind. This isn't a matchup where I think it's too impactful. Who's on the play, who's on the draw? We didn't see anything from them, obviously. Um. I'm thinking about maybe cutting an Ashiok for something like a Lightning Helix. Just something a little bit cheaper, a little bit worse on the draw. But I think it's good enough that we can just stay with the same configuration. All right. They do take the play. This hand is obviously very good. It's got a path, it's got a Mana Lake. And especially in these matchups, I'll keep any playable seven, like I said, just as long as you have some lands and spells, you're gonna get thought seized, so having like a different six wouldn't really make a lot of sense with a lot of hands. You just kinda want to be able to keep a lot of cards. Alright, so they take our path. Alright, we draw a relic. 
Um, this colonnade is a little bit awkward. Oh, I think I'm going to shock Hollow Fountain and just play the Relic and Relic them. Get this on early. Could mess them up for a Gurmag. You never know. And next turn we can have Mana Leak up. Alright, they don't do anything perfect. Now we draw another land, that's great. I'm gonna play Scalding Tarn. get a tap land. They're definitely keeping their life total in mind. I think that's less important in the post-board games. All right. They are just passing. Do I want to sack this relic? Do I want to cycle this illumination? So I don't think I want to cycle the illumination. I think I want to keep the illumination. I think we're just going to keep... I think we're not going to do a whole lot of anything here. They're not doing anything. We don't need to either. All right, drawing the path is perfect. This seems like a good turn to play the Colonnade. Certainly not going to run out Narset into just three open mana when they haven't done anything. Oh, I should definitely Relic them. Fetch land, they fetch. So this could be a spot where they're trying to play a Gurmag Angler, so we could crack it. But I, if they play a Gurmag Angler, I think that's pretty good for us. They like just tap all their mana because we can get an set down. Liliana, Last Hope. Okay, so it looks like they probably have a Stubborn Isle. I'm still going to try and mana leak it, you know, keep up appearances. That's fine. Even though I'm not surprised by this at all. I think that Stubborn Nile is always going to be good enough. And this takes a while before it does a whole lot, especially when we have a relic. We can just find that purge or something. It's another relic, so that we'll probably just be sacking this this turn. Um, so I should probably I can go Flood of Strain, get Island, play Narset. Yeah, let's do that. So let's play Narset. We're looking for like Celestial Purge. Uh, Logic not Helix. We could just take Helix as a way to check the Liliana for a while, but we don't have a ton of bolts left to then kill it. Because we take Helix if they ever want to minus it, but they will know about it. Definitely don't want the Relic. The Logic Knot will be kind of awkward since we have all these Relics, so I think I will just take Helix. It's not the best, but it will do something. Oh, and hold on, I should, I should have Relic them. Uh, Yeah, should have relic them. Don't think it matters a ton. There's plus. Yeah, I'm just gonna cycle this. That, that was a mistake. Maybe I should have even cracked it. That probably would have made a lot of sense. Let me draw a verdict, which is not bad. Now let's start by minusing Narsa. Another path. I think we're just gonna take. Oh, we should probably take Detention Sphere for Liliana, right? Yeah, let's do that. So, to get rid of this Gurmag, could just Verdict. No, and then they can minus. Um, hmm. I don't know, if we go for Path and they stub it, it would be pretty annoying. That's why I really wish we had one more land here. Well, if we Verdict and they minus, then we can kill the lily with the helix and use the d to take care of the angler. Hmm. They're getting pretty long cards. I think I think we can win this game just because we have a lot more resources than our opponent. Maybe we just cast Detention Sphere. See what they do. I like that. Oh, do I like that? Not really. All right, I'm just gonna play Supreme Verdict. So let's think. If they have Snapcaster, it would be kind of bad because they could kill our Narset. But our Narset's not doing a whole lot. 
now that we've activated it twice. There. Yeah, I guess the, their biggest problem with minusing is that it's hard for them to play without a lot of mana. Let's play planes. Let's go for Detention Sphere. Alright, get rid of Lily. Yep. Play a Relic. Alright. Looks like we got this game pretty blocked up here. Yeah, and this Narset could really be hurting their hand if they're drawing Serum Visions or. I guess, I mean, Street Wraith, they can cycle on our turn. Right, I'm just going to cycle this again. There's a Jace the Mind Sculptor. That seems pretty good to play. Maybe I should have played the land after, but... They are Thought Scouring themselves. Okay. Going for stubborn now. I'm just gonna pay. Stubborn denying again. I will pay again. Yeah, interesting. Play by them. I don't know exactly what they're hoping to accomplish there. Maybe I just don't pay for because I'm afraid of something, but. No board, they have no more blue. Pretty easy just to pay there. Yep, and we take it down. Nice. Yeah, I think this is a really good matchup. Uh, yeah, game one, you have a couple more dick cards in the bolts, as we kind of saw. But we ended up taking it down in game two and three. So, all right, back for round three. All right, round three, we're on the draw here. I think I'll keep this. Uh, not great, a little bit awkward in the mana, but good enough to keep. Removal spell, negate for any sort of non-creatures. All right, looks like we're playing as humans. Uh, this hand... Not the best against humans, just because of we have our negate, which is pretty much dead against them. Uh, I'm just gonna play a tapped sacred foundry. Uh, there could be an argument for playing flooded strand, so that maybe we can have field of ruin and have four mana, four three blue mana for cryptic on turn four. But let's zoom it in. Alright, so it looks like kind of on a mana-heavy draw here. It's a logic knot. Uh, doesn't really matter that we don't have it just because, you know, they have cavern. So I think I'll probably just play Steam Vents tapped. Uh, yeah. I have this path up for anything they could play here. Uh, this is a pretty good match of art. They're violing on one. This could be a, probably champion. Right, they're playing a meddling mage. All right. Well, they're playing a meddling mage. Um, it's pretty clear that we're playing Jeskai. guy. Uh, probably named Path. So I should probably use the Path. Just path the champion. Yeah, I'm just gonna path the champion. I just want I want time. And I think path is what they would name as well. Could be bolt, could be helix. Now I have to imagine they'll name Supreme Verdict, um, which is all fine with me. Yeah, they named Lightning Bolt now. That makes sense too. We only have two of those in our deck, but they don't know that. There's an opt. I could field of ruin them and opt. Instead, I think I'm just gonna go island. Opt. I guess we could. Yeah, I'm gonna. Go, I'm gonna go play an island. And opt. Electrolyze. Yeah, that's, that's got to be good enough. It's pretty annoying. We won't have any play this turn, but this can kill two noble hierarchs. It can kill the meddling mage. We're not under the most pressure right now, but if they have almost any follow up, we could be here. Okay. 
Yeah, they're just attacking with meddling mage. So take four, that's fine. Not quite sure what's in their hand. Probably maybe some reflector mages. Um let's play this tapped. Possibly maybe we should play Flood Strand of Cryptic up, but I think I would, we're probably casting Electrolyze this turn. Yeah, they didn't activate their Violent too, so I don't think they have a Lieutenant or anything. They could just be trying to play on Verdict a little bit. All right, let's see if they... hope they take it up to three, yeah. The threes are a lot easier to play around. The twos are Phantasmal Image, Meddling Mage, Thalia, Lieutenant. All right, so let's see. Um, I'm going to let them attack and respond to these triggers and just shock this. The Electrolyze. Their option would have been to kill the two Nobles, but... When they have Noble Hierarch in play, it really incentivizes them to be attacking with one creature a turn, which is a lot easier to deal with if we only have one removal spell each turn, or if we're going to bounce something with Cryptic. Alright, and they just concede, actually. They must... I really don't... We really did not have a lot going on, but... I guess they had even less. Maybe their hand was all lands or something. Alright. So for this matchup, I want basically anything to bring in that does... Just basically anything that... Because we, we, have, we have a lot of cards we want to take out. So these are all seem pretty good. Celestial Purge has enough targets that you want it. So the worst cards are Negate and Ashiok. Probably these Relics. And then Mana Lake and Logic Knot. Uh, Cryptic is a little bit better even though it's more expensive. Just because it's so rare that the uh, the cheap counter spells do anything. Alright, this seems like it's pretty good. Yeah, we're pretty much just tons and tons of removal and some card advantage, so. Feeling pretty good about this one. Yeah, I'm not really sure what, why why they conceded though. Um, they mulligan. I'll keep. This only has one removal spell uh, in path, but it also has a snapcaster. Hieroglyphic illumination we can cycle. We have a Jace. And un unlike most decks, pathing them is you kind of just even if you do it on turn one, it's really not that bad. Uh, I'm gonna chalk in the hollowed fountain and cycle one of these illuminations. This might let them meddling mage path more easily because it's kind of clear that's what I'm representing a lot even outside of a cantrip they did mulligan on the play which is also nice and so then I don't really mind when they play Aether Vial just kind of get them out of cards All right, they don't even have a 2 drop so let's cycle there's an abrade that's pretty good not going to braid the Aether Vial um, really not trying to constrain them on mana or anything I am going to shock in another land so that we can have a braid or even maybe just like cycle and path. I think it's going to be the steam vents. Although the sacred foundry could be good too, but I think it's just going to be steam vents. Alright. My vial and nothing. Makes sense that probably. Well, they could have either cast, but... Alright, so they didn't have a 2-drop last turn, even. So, them even having Vile on 2 doesn't seem to do anything. Alright, they're just passing. Um, I still don't think I want to kill the Vile. They have a bunch of mana. They just don't really have anything. So I'd rather just focus on killing all their creatures. I'm going to cycle this Illumination in the hopes of finding more lands. Alright, they're drawing a canop. They're just drawing a card. That's fine. Fairy. Right, there's Field Rune. I will just play Field Rune. Let's just leave up our spells more, you know, a little bit more disguised. And we can just Field of Ruin them. Hitting their unclaimed territory could be maybe cut them off something like the Kite Sail Freebooter. Right, they take it up to three. But they didn't even play a three drop last turn. They must have kept a really land heavy hand just because they didn't want to mulligan again. Uh, yep, Folly is fine. Just to braid it. Okay. 
Uh, and I suppose I'll play Jace. I can play Jace and just plus on them. I'm going to put pretty much any good spell to the bottom. Cavern. No, keep that. It'd be hard for them to kill it unless they have a Manus Rider. Alright, so they have a Bugler. Alright. They can kill Jace to be kind of unfortunate, but I still think we should be okay. This does also clear the top of their deck, which is pretty nice for them. Reveal Lieutenant. Okay. Alright. Maybe it was better just to pass. I really thought they had just nothing since the amount they had done so little, but I guess they drew Thalia and Bugler for the canopy draw and all that. But we're still fine as long as they don't have a Manus Rider. And even even if they did kill our Jace, I think we would be okay. Yeah, and if we can untap and brainstorm with it, we should have plenty, plenty of uh, removal. Yeah, there's a Teague. Teague can be annoying sometimes, but we have enough cheap cards here that it doesn't matter. And we, we also have Jace, so we can unsummon if we really want to. Uh, instead, I'm just going to brainstorm. Purge doesn't seem great. Probably neither does Sacred Foundry. Yeah, okay. So, what do we want to do here? Can, I think we're going to look to um, Path Snap Path and Block. Right, they activate. They have nothing. Is there any reason to path right now? Not really. I'd rather have them attack. So that we can try to trade Snapcaster off with Gattacteague. There's a lieutenant. Um Alright, so actually, in response to this, maybe I'll just kill both the lieutenants. If they somehow have a 3 drop here, it wouldn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, okay. Oh, I should have fetched, I didn't mean to have drawn this. That was a mistake by me. Another lieutenant, okay. Um, no reason to do anything right now. Yeah, now they're out of cards, so we are good to go here. We can deal with all this pretty easily. Alright, so they're actually letting me save my Jace. Yeah, that's, that's probably right from them. They just need to hope that I don't have anything. I will fetch because I don't want to draw a Celestial Purge. Alright, let's brainstorm, put back a Teferi and a Sacred Foundry, let's Helix this, Path this, yeah, and they just concede. Alright, so pretty easy games against humans, another one of the Just Guys great matchups, so I'll see you for the next round. Alright, back for round four, we are currently 3-0, and let's see if we can keep that going. Uh, we're on the draw here with a very blue-white looking hand. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep it. They mulliganed. Mana leak into Narset seems like it should be good. Against a lot of decks. And we have, you know, have our pretty good mana here with Colonnade, Flood of Strand, all that. Yeah, so Narset's second ability, each opponent can't draw more than one card. It's really impressed me against, like, Phoenix, where if you can play this, and you really just don't activate it at all, that it's just so powerful that they kind of shuts off so much of their deck, and what, if you just leave it at five loyalty, it's so hard for them to deal with. I kind of like that these new Planeswalkers, you can 
you use them twice and kind of like leaves an enchantment. It does make them feel not exactly like planeswalkers all the time, but I still think it's a pretty cool and interesting design, especially for stuff that's like un uncommon in the new set. A lot of power in the set that I think is going to change um, a lot of the older formats. Yeah, the one thing from the new set, though, that's kind of worrying is, like, that Neoform deck. If You guys have all seen that with uh, Allosaurus Riders, and apparently it's not very good with the regular Mulligan, or it's just okay, but with the London Mulligan, it's supposed to be super strong, have a really, really high turn 1 and turn 2 percentage, like, way too high for modern. Uh, but really time will tell. Obviously, nothing's been proven from that deck. Played against it, I think, once online, and they kind of just didn't do anything, but... I know that that easily could just be a misnomer and their deck can, could just be very explosive. Alright, so just leave on Island. There's an Illumination. Alright, that's pretty good. Just gonna play Colonnade and say go. They go for an Opt. Yeah, so this looks like a matchup where Narset should be strong. Anyone playing Opt is weak to Narset. Oh, it's the Mirror. Okay. Or maybe not. They could they could be just Blue White, I suppose, but. It's Sulphur Falls. I'm just going to play another strand. Yeah, so we're not going to cycle this illumination. Um, Alright. Definitely going to counter this. Uh, they're, if they're just kind of playing this turn two in the mirror, they, they might just be uh, low on cards. Or low on lands, I mean. Um, so we can mana like this and then follow it up with our own Narset, which is pretty nice. Nope, they just have another, they do have another colonnade, okay. Ooh, and we have an Ashiok. This is actually pretty good in this matchup because you can uh, mill out your opponents a lot of the time. Uh, I, don't, I say that, I've only played this matchup once or twice, but that did happen. Alright, so I'm going to play Narset, I'm going to minus, I, su I assume they're on just straight blue-white, um, so I'm not really afraid of Lightning Bolt or anything. So, what's the worst thing that could happen? The worst thing is... They they play Jace, right? So I guess it's not that bad we have Narset. They can't they can't brainstorm, they would have to plus um, to do anything. So I guess we'll just take Electrolyze. I was thinking maybe we take Helix, which would prevent them from brainstorming. We are we already prevent them from brainstorming. So I'd be very happy if they played a Jace and brainstormed, so. Yeah, here's Jace. Please brainstorm. Don't think they're going to, but alright, they go for the plus. They're plusing on us. Uh, I normally don't it's probably okay here. Um, in a lot of spots, though, I think when you play Jace, you should probably just plus on yourselves most of the time. They put it to the bottom. And then this kind of matchup where cards are more, it's kind of clearer what they're doing. I can see why they would do that. All right. Um, I could take a Helix as a way to kind of pressure the Jace. I think I would rather have just another Teferi. I think our play this turn will be to play Ashiok. Actually, um, it will prevent them. They haven't played any fetch land, so if they have a fetch land, it will stop them from doing that. If they play their own Teferi, it could be a little. That, that would get the game to a really interesting point. I think I'm just going to take another Teferi. We could play. Yeah, we're just going to play Ashiok. I'm just going to play Ashiok. I'm just going to use it on them. Uh, they have their own Narset, Teferi. We, oh, okay, we got some pretty good cards actually. Jace, D Sphere, Teferi, Narset. Um, yeah, I'll just put Colin in. And Ashiak by by itself can mill for twenty, which in Control Mirror, so many of the games will go go that late. So, All right, and we're gonna need to deal with this at some point. You know, Teferi or Cryptic or something. But yeah, they don't have a land. Oh, we have another Narset. Um, I'm not just going to jam to fairy. I think I'm, I'm not going to play another Narset either. I think I'm going to minus on them. We are, we do need to find answers to this. So I think we're probably going to pass with just like having illumination up. I think I can afford to shock this in in case we need the mana though. But yeah, if we can unsummon this with a cryptic or something, that would even be fine. Right, they're going to plus on us. Uh, that's fine. Still not going to use my mana. They don't know that we have no counter spells. Even if they did, I'm not sure if that would do them any good. I think I'll use the Electrolyze here. 
just to keep the Jace in check, uh, even though Illumination might be a little bit more mana efficient. Uh, do I want to cycle it, though? I don't think so, because if we don't draw anything, we'll probably just cast it. There's a Field of Ruin. Yeah, unfortunately, I, w I really wish you could Field of Ruin kind of, like, get them with uh, Ashiok, but not how it works. Still going to keep milling them. I will play the Field of Ruin, though. And as long as we can find a, you know... A counter spell to back up our Teferi or a Cryptic just to bounce this, I think we'll be good. Maybe we'll play the Narset if we don't find anything. So they put a card in the bottom of our library. I think I'm still going to field the room, them. This could be a little bit of a mistake. Because um, now we don't really have an answer to one, but I don't think that they're really going to be in a spot where they can afford to just activate. Celestial Colony, it just costs too much mana. There's a Helix, so that's kind of at least, you know. Alright, and there's a Cryptic too, perfect. So, now we can do what? So let's... Alright, let's mill him again. Hit a Logic Knot. Alright. Um, yeah, let's just play Planes. And Relic. And our goal is going to be to... At the end of their turn, try to bounce their Jays, um, and then follow that up with Teferi on our turn. And hopefully they cannot counter both of them. And they, they do at least have some number of Logic Knot, which is pretty pretty good for us since we're kind of taking out the graveyards. Alright, they're plussing on us. It's fine. And the Helix, you know, if we need to, can buy a little time. So actually, should we crack the Relic first? first. To kind of maybe try to leave some spells in our graveyard. I, I don't hate that. Yeah, I think I'm going to crack Relic. Hmm, then we can't heal. I guess we don't need to heal it this turn. If yeah, I'd rather just draw the card and make it so the Cryptic goes to our graveyard. Alright, that's really good to... Right, let's try to unsummon Jace. Alright, so they have an Absorb. Kind of interesting. Can we play Teferi and have Cryptic? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Not quite. Hmm. I think we'll just... I'll shock this in. I'm just going to play Teferi. Right now, they, it has to be like a negate because they can't it can't be mana leak and it can't be logic knot. So yeah, all right, yeah, we would just unsummon that. I don't really know how they would beat any of this. All right, nice. All right, we even have some cool cards for our sideboard at games too. I think we want disdainful stroke and dispel too. Uh, obviously, Ashiok just another doesn't have the the biggest impact in the short term, but in the long term, it can really win these games I grind out. Fairy Time Raveler is absolutely insane in the mirror matches. Click is great. D Sphere just can help deal with random permanence. Uh, Disdainful Stroke, not always the best, but you can counter a Logic Knot sometimes. Um, so it's not too bad. In this matchup, I like to take out Supreme Verdict, some number of Lightning Helixes, some number of Path to Exiles. I actually think. Maybe we cut even cut two relics. Uh, we can we have the Ashiox to kind of hit their graveyard while not hitting ours. We'll even one just because it can be good sometimes. Um, but they might even I want our Snapcaster Mage to be pretty good. They might even trim theirs because they saw that we have relic and Ashiok in our main deck. So I think we just do this. Um, yeah, I like to have enough you know lightning bolts and helixes to deal with help deal with planeswalkers, deal with random you know if they have their own Vendillion clicks stuff like that. I think this is a pretty good configuration here. I don't like bringing in Surgical, especially when we already have these other pieces of incidental graveyard hate. I just don't think it does enough, often enough. Yeah. And if they have Geist or something, maybe we'll bring back in Verdict, but that's not very popular right now, so.
Oh yeah, this hand is pretty good. Just some lands. Cantrip. Where's that? Uh, let's shock and hog fountain pass. Yeah, so early turns, we're just gonna be focused on, you know, sculpting our hand a little bit. Uh, hitting our land drops. I know I said hitting our land drops. I'm gonna bottom this. We do need a little bit more action. Lightning bolt, not great, but could be good. Um, really like trying to negate a dispel, Dovins, veto, something a little bit cheaper. Yeah, luckily our NAR sets I think are a lot better than theirs because we have lightning bolt, right? So if they want to play theirs and kind of have it stick and play, they can't even activate it once. As we're ours, we can activate twice with no fear of them kind of dealing just one to it. Outside of maybe a Snapcaster Mage, which, you know, we can still manage pretty easily. Uh, and Colonnade is such a huge mana investment for the first ten turns that yeah, it's pretty difficult to do as well. Looks like, are they thinking about playing something here, maybe? Maybe they just didn't F6. Maybe they're going to Surgical or Opt. I would uh, I would be happy with that. Yeah, so it's interesting with this deck. I've been thinking about how um, to kind of build the sideboard. So some of the stuff that you really want to deal with is Tron, and because the new Karn, I think, is going to be a big problem for a certain amount of decks. Um, especially, especially this like making Tron even stronger. It's not really the greatest for Jessica. I would like to be able to have maybe one or two more pressure pieces in the sideboard outside of just our Vendillion clicks. Um, could be guys to Saint Traff could be the answer. I just that card is really really narrow, and you can bring it in in some matchups, but not a ton is my biggest problem with it. And you know tapping out in your main phase isn't great, uh, but I'm really not sure what what else we really could play. I wonder if there's anything that, you know, somehow like interacts with Planeswalkers very well. Maybe some sort of flash card that I haven't really thought of before. Alright, there's a Snapcaster Mage. Uh, it's not bad, we can play, play that on turn 3. Just gonna play Flooded Strand to give up the appearance that we have spells to play. Alright, I'm just gonna pass. Um, I'm gonna fetch for a tap sneak event, I think. Um, white mana post board is not as important as red board. It's red mana, I don't think. Right, we have two Narsets. Uh, not gonna play one into three open mana and let my opponent have a whole turn to do whatever they want. Instead, we're gonna pass and probably go for a Snapcaster Mage Opt at the end of their turn. Yeah, they're not gonna do anything either. Their mana is a bit awkward. Having having two planes uh, cannot be great for them. It does mean that since they're on all basics, we can't feel the ruin. But our mana is fine. All right. So now I probably will take a land if we find one. Yeah, I'll just take that one. There's another cryptic. Right. Get them for two. And if they don't do anything again, like they just play a land and say go, I probably will try to cash in one of these cryptics to bounce a land and draw a card. Uh, just because our hand is getting a little bit kind of clunky here. Right, they just fetch for island. Do they have anything to play or are they just fetching an island? Yeah, they can't have their own cryptic command to bounce one of our lands here, so. I don't know, maybe they have a. It's like a cantrip. Right, so they have their own snap off. That's fine by me. Yeah. Probably won't try to lightning bolt to deal with their snapcaster mage. Probably just try to trade off snapcaster mages.
be interesting to see if they even attack here. No, they don't even attack, so they all, they also want to trade. Um, so if I target the colony, that would keep them off five again for next turn. If I target island, it would. I think that that's going to make them more likely to try to fight over this, and I, and I do want them to fight over this. I don't think they should, but a lot of players. And we, we do get an advantage if it resolves either way, I think, so, yeah, it'll click straight. Um, hmm, ooh. Alright, well, now I'm not going to attack, even. i shock this in. just going to say go. Since I now have a very clean answer to deal with the Snapcaster Mage, and we can apply a, a very real amount of pressure with these cards. Right, so they actually go for an attack. I am just going to take it. I think... I can afford to be very free with my life total here. Um, I'm going to go for the click. All right, let's see what they are working with. All right, so I'm going to path the click. That is also a totally fine outcome. That This kind of makes me wish I had blocked, but since we're kind of leaving a little light on mana, Maybe I'll just bolt their snap, depending on how their hand looks here. Alright, so their hand looks very, very counterspell heavy. Uh, it's just one, two, three, four, five counterspells. And an elimination. So we're going to take the elimination. Uh, it would That would just give them something to do. I don't want them to... If their hand is going to be all counterspells, I want them to kind of be stuck in there. So I'm going to take the elimination. And I'm actually going to try to bolt this snapcaster. Since I want our Snapcaster to be able to attack now, since I think this can get in a lot of damage. Especially if they have to path it, that's a good exchange for us as well. Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six mana. Alright, so do I want to shock this in? If we shock this in, that would let us do something like Electrolyzing Cryptic. Um, but I don't think that's going to come up too often. Eh, I think it's pretty free. So we have multiple answers to colonnades, and it's really their only big way to apply pressure. Yeah, serum is fine. Alright, so actually here... I'm going to Cryptic to bounce their Colonnade. Um, let's see, so then they can respond with Field Room. I should probably bounce their Island? No. Alright, so let's do... Yeah, because they, they don't have enough blue, I think. I think we might be able to resolve on our set. Maybe not. Well, we don't have... Hmm. They just have a Negate. Is it worth it? Maybe I'll just Field Room their Colonnade. Maybe it'll Electrolyze them. Yeah, I, I was confused. I thought maybe we'd be able to resolve a Narset. I don't think we could. Maybe, oh, we think we could have bounced and then played both of our Narsets. That might have worked. We got one to stick. We can do that next turn, though. If we really want to try. And I'm just going to cycle this Electrolyze. Yeah, we do negate, which is pretty good. Alright, I'm just going to attack them again. Yeah, and I think this next turn we'll be able to set, to, set up to get a Narset down. Fine. Let's just get mountain. Right. Find another field ruin. Oh, especially if they're trying to resolve something. Detention sphere. They're trying to detention sphere my snapcaster mage. Um, I'm gonna fight over this just because they're casting it. So I don't. I don't really care about it though. So. But maybe this will get them to tap some of their mana. And they go for the negate. I well, if I negate back, will they also then negate back? They'll probably use another counter spell. I have to imagine. Yeah, I'm gonna negate back just because I think they're gonna counter back. Yeah, this is excellent for us. All right. Nope. 
Yeah, so what did they use? They used they used mana leak and negate. Alright, so I'm just playing our set. They didn't even play their colon oh we missed, that's unfortunate. Um they didn't even play their colonnade either, so not that that would matter too much. Alright, we missed, which is unfortunate. But this Narset should do a pretty good job of, you know, kind of preventing them from doing a lot. I play a Ghost Quarter. Oh, we killed their colony. We didn't bounce it. Um, so we still know their whole hand. So I'm not gonna. Should I do anything? Should I use this to Electrolyze? I just have a bunch of counter spells. Um, yeah, I'll just use the Electrolyze. Where's the actually out? Minus another Ashiok. Okay, I think I'm gonna take. Hmm, I was gonna say I was gonna take Cryptogram, but if we take Bolt, they're at nine. But I think I think Cryptic Command is just is just better. Um. Yeah. All right. So I'm just gonna pass. I'm not gonna play right now into their all their counter spells. At the end of their turn, though, I think I'm going to try to bounce the Detention Sphere. Um, I think we'll just get a counter spell out of them. Turn permit to owner's hand, draw a card. Um, Ashiok is, would be, is going to be pretty good to get down, too, so if we can yeah, so use the Absorb. So I go for Snapcaster Mage. They'll just Logic on it. But then I can play both of these planeswalkers. So yeah, we have a negate in our graveyard. So let me go for snap. There, they should definitely use a logic knot here. Because if they were willing to fight over me getting back a snapcaster, it doesn't make any sense to not then fight over this snapcaster. So they use a Logic Knot. Yep. This is all fine. Alright, so let's play our land. Let's lead on Ashiok. Well, what can they do? They can, they can feel the rune to get another blue. Counter the Ashiok. And then our second Narset resolves. And if they let Ashiok resolve, then we can exile their graveyard. And then we'll be able to count on our set. Right. right. Let's get blue and blue. Right, so they can field the ruin to get blue. One card in the graveyard. I'm gonna tap these. Yeah, we can we can definitely pay. But they still have that. I don't know why I dismissed it. But. Right, I will keep this one. I'm going to activate. Fairy and Disdainful Stroke. Hmm. So we take Disdainful Stroke. That turns off a lot of their really good draws. And I think their Logic Knot is going to be able to counter our Teferi. So I actually think I'm going to take Disdainful Stroke here. And it, uh, it can also counter Logic Knot, which is nice. Even though it seems like Teferi might be the better take there, but it would be still, even though we are exiling the graveyard, it would be hard to you know, do anything with this. So they have their own Teferi. Uh, they can just Logic Knot back. Um, I guess we make them use it. I mean, if we missed for one turn, having more mana would kind of have made that in. Maybe we shouldn't have used it since it, we let them trade there, but. Alright, they're just minus on our Narset. I don't see if we can draw anything. Their path. Uh, I'm just going to start exiling their deck, I guess. Hmm. So I'm just gonna try to draw that that uh, Narset again. They can stop it by using the field of rune, but I'll make them, you know, do it. 
There's an elimination, which is really nice. So let's just cast the elimination. And yeah, so if they feel ruin us as well, they, they will not be able to get a land, which is kind of nice. Actually, can this fetch land get anything? We have both our hollow fountains, one steam vents, sacred foundry. Yeah, it can, this fetch land actually cannot get anything. Because, um. Wait, oh, I thought we just steam vents in the graveyard. Oh, no, this is our graveyard. Yeah, they kill their steam vents with a field rune. We do still have a basic planes, but this fetch land can't get anything. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, they're thinking about. Responding to this. Right, so let's float a blue mana. Yeah, so they're actually gonna go they're gonna go down a land here. Um, let's see if we can draw anything. Ooh, Teferi is really good. Fit, ooh, I think we can do it all. Alright, so let's do Fairy. Yeah, if this resolves, we can uh, minus in the detention sphere to get a snapcaster, which can then bolt. But it looks like it might not resolve. All right, so actually they have a click, which, um, perfectly enough, doesn't do anything. Since we have two paths. Right, now this is in play, they cannot play at instant speed, so we know that the rest of this turn is um, we can just do whatever we want. So let's minus on detention sphere. This does let them have a detention sphere, obviously, but why don't we draw our own detention sphere? This can target lightning bolt. Let's bolt to fairy. And uh, we can path on their turn. They can't play spells at not instant speed, so. No rush to do anything. And they do have another detention sphere. Annoyingly, we cannot detention sphere, detention sphere. But uh, they're actually attacking at Ashiok. Yeah, so I think they're probably into detention through the Ashiok, which our Teferi can eventually tick up and bounce again. Yeah, that's this Teferi was such a such a good draw. Let us kinda answer everything. And we're still applying pressure with Snapcaster Mage and having our Teferi. Hmm. I should keep the clock in mind because if we lose this game, it could be pretty relevant. So, a cryptic what? I bounce my sacred foundry. Okay, I guess that's really the only thing they can bounce, and it doesn't do anything else. Uh, because they can't, they can't play it at instant speed, obviously, so they can't counter anything. Doesn't make any sense to really tap my creatures. Um, yep, yeah, okay. No, nothing else to do. Yeah, and I can't desphere their desphere because it, it says you may exile target non land permanent, not named detention sphere. Alright, here is a snapcaster targeting cryptic. I suppose I'll just dispel the cryptic. Um, dispel gets a lot worse when, you know, they can't play, like like any of their counter spells. So I think cashing it in here is perfectly fine. Just to trade a card for a card. They might try to bounce their own Snapcaster, I guess, and draw a card. I'm just trying to bounce this again. Uh, 
Yeah, I'll just dispel to deny them the card draw. There's a colonnade. We have a path and we can block, so. There's a Teferi. That seems pretty good. Um, so let's see. Teferi. Alright, this is always going to plus. So if we minus on D Sphere, we can just. Uh, yeah, they just can see. I think we would have minus on Detention Sphere just and just started milling them again. Uh, we have the path for their colonnade, so. Yeah. You see our awesome three mana planeswalkers did a ton of work there. All three of them came in Ashiok, Narset, and Teferi. And we move on to 4 0. So, uh, hopefully, we can win the next round, and I'll see you in a second. All right, back for round five. Hopefully, let's see if we can get that uh, 5 0 uh, on the draw. I think I'm going to keep this. Hopefully, Relic Orgenitus is good against our opponent. And if not, we can just cycle him. So. Temple Garden. Okay. In general, I like Jeskai's matchup against the card Temple Garden. So, let's go get a. Hall of Fountain, and play a Relic. Yeah, it looks like these Relics, they might be okay against our opponent, if they're like a Kitchen Finx, or maybe an Eternal Witness deck, but I'm really not gonna, you know, hold them for too long. Okay, so we're playing as Bants, could be Bant Spirits, I suppose. What do they got? Alright, so it is Bant Spirits. Alright, so these Relics aren't gonna do just about anything. Um, so we definitely want to get rid of that. Probably should do it now before uh, before they can really do anything too crazy and get a huge board. So I think I'm gonna sack this before I play the path. Uh, and I'm just gonna path it right. Now. Well, so this would definitely give them another land, but if they have a rattle chains, I'd rather just. Yeah, I'm just gonna just gonna path it right now. They could already cast a collective company next turn, so right. if they had a land, obviously. Yeah, so this is kind of like you know, obviously relic isn't you know always upside here. It's kind of annoying that we have to cycle it a couple times. All right, so they do have the company. Hopefully, they have another land where I'll feel kind of feel kind of bad. Ooh, or we can just get a great electrolyze here. All right. So, because they missed their land drop, I'm definitely just going to kill their two noble hierarchs. Yeah, that was a pretty bad company from them. Obviously, spell quiller, and that's not really where you want to hit it. All right. We're in good shape here. We have, you know, two more path to exiles. This can cycle and the cryptic. Yeah, the one thing we have to, you know, try our best to avoid is them getting down two copies of the uh, the Lord Drog School Captain, because that that can be something that is pretty hard to break out of. All right, so let's play this relic. I'm just gonna play Colonnade. Um, we'll use this turn to cycle the relic and cast a path. Probably gonna path the Wanderer. Actually, uh, it makes our cryptic. Uh, a lot harder to use. Right, so they have a rattle chain. So, hmm. What do I want to path? Can't crack the rock first because then they can counter. Um, we're getting a little bit low. Both two two power creatures. I think I'm still probably just gonna path the wanderer. It's just gonna make uh, our life more awkward in the future. Alright, they just let it resolve. That makes sense. Uh, and actually, can I be holding priority still or no? No, I should have cracked the relic uh, with that path still in the stack. But, shouldn't matter too much. If we draw another snap, we have another path. But, just a little thing there that we could have done better. Guess I'll relic them. Why not? This does let them play pretty much everything at instant speed now, but I always kind of play under the assumption that they can do that anyway, and I play a lot of my stuff during my own turn anyway. So. Alright, let's crack this relic. 
Something like a Supreme Verdict would be very good. Watch your eyes, that's good too. There's Supreme Verdict too. Um, I think this board is probably good enough to Supreme Verdict. Maybe we can wait one turn. I'm trying to think, if we Supreme Verdict and they play a company, that could be kind of bad for us. Um, just because it would, it would be. I think I'm going to wait one more turn here. We can try to use the Electrolyze. Right, so they're just going to cast a Supreme Phantom. That's fine. I might just try to tap their team, actually. Because uh, that'll set up pretty well for a Cryptic. The one thing is I, I do want to probably get Rattle Chains. Right, if they can flash in a Selfless Spear, that could be really bad. The other option would be to just try to kill the Rattle Chains right now. Hmm. Let's just try to use Decryptic. Should I fetch for Island? No, I want to be able to get another White Source. So let's go for a Fog. They only have two cards, so as long as one of them is not Selfless Spirit, I feel pretty good. All right, they're gonna play a. Oh, they're gonna company here. Okay. All right, company. They get a wanderer and a spellclaw. Okay. All right. So if we can clean this all up with verdict, that'll be great. Obviously. How much are we taking here? Seven. I'm gonna fetch as well. Yeah, so I'm trying to think is there any way we can play around this? If we just try to path the rattle chains first, they could um if they have the selfless spirit they can just play it anyway, so just gotta go for the verdict and hope it's good. Alright, it is very good, it would appear. Alright, so I will bounce their Temple Garden, I guess. Draw a card. Which will logic not. Hmm. Do I want to go to one? So the difference between being at one and three uh, is pretty big, I think. Uh, most things they play, we can path. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take the damage. Uh, I would turn off a lot of our fetch lands, and a lot of their creatures, you know, only have one or two power by themselves. So this might even let us take a hit at some point from something. And since we have the path, uh, we don't really give them... The only, the only bad thing that could happen here, really, is if they if they company. Uh, it's selfless spirit, it's fine. Yeah, and I'm just going to try to path that right now, I think. Alright, now I can get Teferi down. Alright, now here we go. Alright, we get Teferi. We untap some lands. Yeah, we're sitting pretty... Yeah, it's a very close game where our hand was a bit awkward early with those two relics that we kind of had to cycle through, spend a lot of time doing that. But now we've definitely got the game into a stabilized point where we want it. Deputy of Detention. Um, should we counter this? So, I think I will counter it just because we do, I know we have another Teferi, but it would just be a pretty big pain, I think, to do that. So let's counter it unless they pay four, and I guess I'll leave Path in my graveyard. Maybe that's not right. If they played a Geist or something, I'd, ra I'd way rather have the, the the Supreme Verdict in my graveyard, I suppose. Right. So, kind of let's pay four. Alright, just keep going up. 
and this colonnade. So, right, and there's Snapcaster too. All right, I think we've just about locked up every avenue. Maybe if we get a couple more cards in our graveyard. Might be important. Right, Self spirit, that's fine. Just for just so we can snap logic on something. or something that we want to be able to kill. Right, so they do have a company, um, which we can Snapcaster Mage Logic Knot. All right. Nice, we take it down. Very close game, they're very close. We got pretty, uh, pretty fortunate to draw that Supreme Verdict. All right, so definitely want Fairy Time Raveler, Tension Sphere, these clicks, this a braid, a dispel, I think. What don't I want? I don't want Relic. Don't want Ashiok. Uh, Negate seems pretty bad. And probably one Cryptic to try to have cheaper cards. Mana Leak might be worse than Cryptic Command, but especially on the draw, I think just having, being able to play as many cards as possible is gonna be more important. Make sure we're not missing anything. Don't want any of this. Yep, all right, yeah. And Dispel is just a little bit better than Negate, obviously, because if they're playing a non-creature, it's pretty much collect a company or a counter spell of their own. So being able to Dispel is pretty important. Uh, yeah, but let's, uh, let's head back in. Hmm. <laughs> this hand. They mulliganed. I think I'm going to be really greedy and keep this hand. Oh, maybe, I don't know. Maybe we should just have a hand with like a lightning, like any lightning bolt hand is better. Or a helix hand. But we're on the draw, so we get two draw steps to find you know, path, bolt, helix, a braid. And fairy time raveler especially, I really do want to try them out here. Making them play at sorcery speed seems really powerful. Click is good. Click can maybe get rid of something if we need to. I'm, I'm going to be very greedy and keep this. On the play, I think I would definitely keep. On the draw... I'm keeping, but I, I think it's wrong. All right, they're mulliganing to four, so. Having a functional hand will probably be enough to win this game, then. So, I mean, if they play a guy, I mean, this this can block guys to stay trapped, at least, so. Kind of covered from that, even. All right, what do they have? Oh, they have a selfish spirit, that's fine. Alright, we did not find exactly what we were looking for in a two drop, but I think we're still okay. Right, they're getting us for two. Got a Moreland Haunt. Akira, okay. Definitely gonna try to see if we can trade off our uh, click for that. Probably not, they'll probably just sack this Alpha Spirit. Um, but that, that could be very annoying. But they only have one card left because they mulliganed, so. Even if we have to two for one ourselves on that, I think we'll be okay. Yeah, so let's just get, I think we can get Sacred Foundry, actually. And then just get like Islands with our fetch lands. Oh, Verdict, that's obviously very good. Um, hmm, yeah. So verdict's pretty good. I'm, I'm still going to click after they attack to block, and that should hopefully make them use the self of spirit so that our verdict can clean up whatever, if they have any follow-up. Uh, yeah, Scream Phantom. Might even click ourselves, but I kind of like... Uh, I don't know, we probably don't need something like the Narsa, you know. Might as well just click them and see what their last card is. If the company, I'll take it. If not, I probably won't. 
Noble Hierarch, you can keep that. And let's block Akira. Uh, I assume that they're going to sacrifice this. Yep, and this works out very well for us. Hopefully they even play the Noble Hierarch. Now that we know about it. Yep, they do. And So we can clean this all up with an island. As long as we can beat a moorland haunt, should have this one in the bag. All right, and we take it down. Awesome. Yep. So this is that uh, new version of Jeskai. I think is going to be a lot better suited than the old version. Uh, where is it? Try to pull up the deck list here real quick to talk about it for a second. I'm blind. Every, everyone can see it but me. But <laughs> Maybe I can look at it through here. Here we go. Alright, sorry about that. Uh, yeah, so this deck I think is... You know, I think there's still some, some changes to be made, but I've really liked having Narset, Ashiok, and these relics. Um, honestly, the relics, we didn't play against any decks where they were, you know, super insane or super amazing. We, you saw that they were fine, and they never really hurt us too much with how we configured the deck. If this deck could also somehow play Search for Iskana, that would be amazing, but I just don't think it's possible if I want to play three relic. We could, I suppose, try to say maybe play a main deck Surgical in this content, maybe another Ashiok, but that seems way too cute. Uh, another option would be to maybe keep, keep this configuration, have some Ascantas, and then just have a bunch of rest in pieces in the sideboard. Where we, if we're going to bring in rest in piece, we just take out Ascanta. But I don't know. I, I, we didn't really seem to need it. We never really ran out of cards between you know Illuminations, Jays, Teferi, to Narset. So Narset fills a very similar role to what Ascanta did before, and sometimes her passive ability is really, really good as well. Yeah. So hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you want to see more of this deck or. You know, maybe I'll change it up a little bit. I've been playing a little bit of Esper Control. I played Blue Red Phoenix at the Classic in Richmond over the weekend. I uh, had a lot of fun with that. And I could, you know, maybe do something with that. Maybe play Narset there. Who knows? But, yeah, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed watching me play this. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at BenPatNick. You can follow LotusBox on Twitter. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the video, all that stuff. I will try to make sure the deck list for this gets put down in the description. Uh, maybe I'll tweet out like a sideboard guide or something for it. So if people want to play it themselves, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that. So, yep, yeah, have a good day. Thank you for watching. Lotus Box, now powered by Cardboard Live, is proud to introduce you to all of its sponsors Introspective, Red Handed Art, and MTGO Traders. Use the code LotusBoxPayPal to get 8% off singles for orders over $5. And links to all these sponsors are in the description box down below.